All right, everyone, good morning. This is the morning briefing from the Celtic Way. We've reached match day, guys, Celtic versus Slovan Bratislava. Tonight, so we're going to be building ahead to the big game over the next, I don't know, half an hour, 35 minutes, possibly even 40 minutes, guys, depending on how much we've we've got to say. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's arrived, it's a big night, and I think we're all we're all really excited about the game. Is that the, the first point we should probably make? And I guess you're all feeling like that as well in the, the comments, Tony. It speaks for itself, doesn't it? How massive is this? Yeah, it's yeah. just huge for Celtic, and that's not put a nugget of gold for information from Kevin yesterday. Celtic have never won their opening game in the Champions League. Yeah. Uh, group phase, now yeah. league phase. Let's go and do it. Well, you know, just grab that, you know, grasp the nettle on that and go and do that and just set ourselves up. I mean, how, how good will you feel tonight if Celtic have registered the first three points in the, in the Champions League? That's what it's about. And we were speaking off air before we came on and I said to you, love the domestic dominance, but we just crave success at this platform, don't we? At this yeah. elite club level of football. We all crave it, and that's the box that remains unticked for Brendan Rodgers, and it's the box that's remained unticked for many Celtic teams uh, for a long time, for too long. Mm. And I want that box to start being ticked as of from tonight. Just get get ourselves off to a flyer. Any kind of win will do. Performance would be great, but just win this football match. Yeah, um, I, I agree totally in terms of, you know, the, the domestic stuff is, is your bread and butter and you never take success for granted. The team have to work incredibly hard every year to, to win trophies because it's, it's not easy. Uh, and even in a league like Scotland, it's not easy. Um, you know, it's great. But as fans, for me, it's the UEFA Champions League, these European games that, that these days, I'll be honest, really give me the excitement. I don't necessarily get... I always get excitement from watching Celtic, but um, it's these games that really get you going because there's real jeopardy there, even against a, a so-called, you know, one of the weaker teams in, in the Champions League this season. Tonight is, um, you know, a really tough game. Some people would... I think we're favourites, but a lot of people would look at it and say it's a relatively even matchup given our... European record in, in recent years, champions of Scotland against champions of Slovakia. Uh, so these are the games that, that you, you can't wait for. And um, there's an opportunity tonight for the team, Ryan, to, to go and get three big points. I think these are the games that everybody anticipates, especially if your team does get through to the group stage or league phase of the Champions League. This first game, the chance to really put down a marker ahead of the rest of the, the tournament. There's no two ways about it. This is a... This is a game that Celtic should win tonight, given the opposition and given the whole spectacle, given the respective squads between the two of them as well. Um, it's a favourable draw, this one, having this game first. Uh, but I, I think that puts a different sort of pressure on Celtic being the favourites coming into the game at Celtic Park. Uh, but if they want, if they have any aspirations of taking it further than just the league phase and going into the playoffs, or, you, you know, I mean, it would be unlikely, but getting straight through, then they've got to win games like this against Sloven Bratislava. So it's a very different pressure that's on them tonight. It's a pressure that they don't normally feel in the Champions League. But I hope that they take that in their stride and really and really use it to their advantage. They'll have 60,000 mad fans tonight screaming, every, screaming for every ball, every challenge. As I always say, these games take care of themselves. A European night at Celtic Park. The atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric. I just hope that the players can match that. You look at individuals like Arna Engels who will feel that atmosphere for the first time. He had a glimpse of it against Rangers and then against Hearts, but he's truly felt nothing until he's played in a Champions League night at Celtic. These are his decision will be vindicated when he steps onto that park tonight and he hears the Champions League and from when he hears you'll never walk alone. It's up to Celtic to match the fans tonight because the fans will be there. If they can turn up and put in a good performance and get a win on the board, then I think it makes mm. everybody excited for the forthcoming campaign, regardless of who they play next, which is a difficult slate in terms of Borussia Dortmund and then Atalanta. Two really tough games against two teams that got to European finals last season. So this is a game that Celtic have got to go in and win, um, hopefully win comfortably as well. 
Bratislava. Statistically, are the worst team in the Champions League, but I wouldn't read too much into that. They've got to they've got to really assert their dominance and assert their quality on the opposition tonight. Do you think we'd be the worst team in the Champions League based on statistics? No, because how can you be much worse than we've been in recent years? Sorry, Tony, you wanted to say something there. Even though it's match day one and you talk about this pressure, for me this is a must-win game. Nothing else. It's it's must-win and I get it. People say, ah, you need to ease yourself out. Nah, I'm not easing myself out of the competition. The manager wants to compete, not participate. For me, this is a must-win game. It's as simple as that. To have any chance of uh, qualifying for a knockout phase. I'm not entertaining any other thoughts other than this being a must-win. And you're talking about Celtic Park Ryan in the atmosphere. Just to whet your appetite, guys, I've put something in the comment section now. I've picked 10 of the best. See if some of your uh, memories of Celtic Park on Champions League nights match my 10 of the best. I'm sure they will. I'm sure you'll be able to guess what one's number one, but we do the countdown 10 to 1. So. But yeah. The thing is, we've had so many, haven't we? I mean, it's, yeah. you know, the Barcelona win is, is the top. I mean, Juventus, Man United, Shakhtar, there's AC Milan... That's about six you've just uh, not given away. I've been quite a lot of them. I've realised that. I was reading yeah, the, but, the you know, I mean, last that's... night. I realised I've been at quite a few of them. Yeah, yeah. and that's the thing. You, uh, and they rem- you remember them for that very reason. They're wonderful occasions and you know, Celtic uh, prevailed in the end. So you just want another night like that, another special night because there's not a place like it yeah. in European football. Uh, Glasgow, G4 to our Champions League like when Celtic won, it's brilliant. Yeah, and I, I sense there's a, a real buzz about the place ahead of this game with the, the new format and the way the team are playing. And I I, I just think there's a, a feeling amongst the Celtic support that we've been waiting for for this night for a while. Um and you know, we all love the domestic dominance and listen, I'll never tire of win, of winning domestic trophies. But I think we're all just fed up of of Celtic not reaching their potential in Europe. Um, and there's an opportunity, I think, with the fixtures we've been given for us to do it this time. It's not going to be easy. There's some really tough games. But, you know, I think it's time for me personally to to back this Celtic team uh, to, to go and do it. A few comments. Uh, Brian saying in 12 hours we'll either be winning the Champions League or finishing bottom. No in between. Uh yeah, Pete bringing up some interesting scores last night. Teams that we're coming up against as well. Aston Villa beat Young Boys 3-0 in Switzerland. We are going to play both of those teams later on, so that's interesting. Uh, I think Dinamo Zagreb, are they the other one? They they, they yeah. lost 9-2 to Bayern Munich. Ryan was saying that um, Bayern had three disallowed goals as well on top of their nine they scored, so it could have been 12-2. Uh, I don't think there was any other teams last night that we were due to face tonight. There's um, Club Bruiser playing Dortmund. Again, that's two teams we've got coming up. So that that's on the same time as our game. So I don't expect people to be watching it or anything. But some interesting results last night, Tony. Yeah, and uh, I think I think yeah, Zagre brought it back to 3-2 at one point. If memory serves, is that right? Yeah. They did die. So they, again, they, they poked the bear of Bayern Munich at that point, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, so again, Bayern obviously took their foot off the pedal and then realised, right, OK, we're in a game here for five minutes and then within jig time it was like six or seven, two. And uh, so, but again, going to Germany, scoring twice, they're a team you'll have to be wary of too. Uh, I know they get hammered and they end up and you take the positives from that, that they, they concede a lot of goals. But, you know, I, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again. There is just no easy games at this level. There is no weaker opposition or easier opposition. It's an unforgiving environment. You have to be bang at it. And if you're not bang at it, you will come a cropper, as Celtic have found to their costs in, over the years at uh, this level of competition. But, the manager was quite bullish yesterday, and, and I liked what he said at one point. Yeah. He was talking about players believing that Champions League are belief games, and he said that, that he's been privileged enough to work with world-class players and elite players who believe that they belong at this level. And he said Celtic have been at this level before. 
but this is the most confident he is as a Celtic boss going into the Champions League because he believes he has the quality now to to compete. He said back uh, the first time, he said they had good players, but they didn't have quality players to take it that extra bit. And that's when, I won't say they get found out, but that's when your deficiencies were exposed or your lack of quality at that level was exposed. And I, and I thought that was really interesting. And he wasn't having a go at previous Celtic teams that have played in the Champions League. He was just saying it takes a certain calibre of player to play at this level and in this environment to be able to handle the expectation, to be able to handle adversity, just to be able to handle the level. He kept talking about the level. And uh, I think that's what excites Celtic most. You know, uh, this is... It's a, as he said, it's a their belief games. It's, it's more mental than anything, and I use that in the sense of the word that it's that it's meant. You know, you you have to get that mindset right to go in and face this this level of competition. And I think Brendan yeah. Rodgers believes he has players that are capable now, and players that have played as, as we were talking about the past couple of days. The ones that have played before have yeah, to show yeah. they've learned have to bring that knowledge to the table and put it to good use. But, yeah, that that's that's the big part for me when he's talking about belief. Belief is likely to come from previous experiences. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the, the kind of core of this team are now going into their third campaign in this competition. Carter Vickers, Hitati, Kyogo, Maida... Obviously, Callum McGregor, Greg Taylor. Obviously, Callum McGregor's played a bit more. Casper Schmeichel, I think, has only ever played one season in the Champions League, um, I think. But he'll, he'll have a lot of experience regardless. You're not worried about him. I, I had a look at the the first game we played last season against Feyenoord, uh, just after what Brendan Rodgers had said. And, and honestly, that night we had like four debutants in our starting lineup. I think Liam Scales, Gustav Lager, Bielka... Alistair Johnson and Lewis Palmer all were all making the Champions League debuts that night. And we had, I think, another four off the bench, like Iwata and O and Yang uh, and Home as well. And obviously Home and Lagerbiel could get sent off. And part of that was real inexperience at that level. You know, I don't want to get ahead of myself when we still got a game to play tonight, but you look at the, the squad we've got for tonight's game and there's not a player really you'd have that same fear about. I mean, the guys tonight who could make their Champions League debut, Kuhn, you're not concerned about Kuhn at all. You're just excited to see Kuhn at that level, even though he's never played Champions League. Engels, you know, you say the exact same about Adam Ida, I feel the same about as well. So there's no doubt to me that the, the squad is stronger and the new signings are stronger going into this game than they were a year ago. But also the likes of Liam Scales, uh, and Alistair Johnson have now had one season in the Champions League and will be better than they were a year ago. Um, and that's always what Ange Postecoglou said, didn't he, when we had the conversation in his first campaign in the Champions League. He said the way you succeed at this level is you keep getting yourself to this level. This is our third season, so I really hope now that you'll start to see the the kind of benefits of the experience and the mistakes and the bad nights we had last season but Ryan the team the team it's all good like me saying that and us saying that the team need to go out tonight and deliver like a, a draw tonight is a draw is going to feel like a bit of a disaster I think tonight at full time we have to win tonight for me um, but Brendan Rodgers says we can deal with the pressure I don't know if I want to label it as a must win, but it's one that preferably you would like to see Celtic win if you're using a more diplomatic term for it. I think just with the way that this group is going to go, it is, it is a must as a must win. I think I'll actually go out and say it's it's a must win early on. If you're really going to make a statement in this Champions League and really put yourself about, then they've, they've got to win this opening game. As much as Bratislava have got European experience, even this season they've gotten through four qualifiers. Remember when Celtic had to go through four qualifiers to get into a group stage or a, or a league phase or whatever? I think we ever did it, did we? No, we, I think we managed three and then we got put out by yeah. Athens um, in 2019-2020 season, um, which, which actually came to the Europa League and we had a good season in that. Was it or was that the season before? I got all those seasons mixed up, all those qualifiers, you know, so many qualifiers, and we'll probably be back to that next season. But 
Yeah, it's all about putting down a marker ahead of the new ahead of the new campaign. Um, Bratislava, they'll be coming to the Celtic Park looking for an upset. I heard that their their coach was looking for a draw potentially at the game. I'm hoping that's the the sort of mentality that they have because if a team's going to play for a draw, then more often than not they will go and get beat. Because if that's their mentality, then you know that they won't fully turn up but it's all about Celtic tonight if Celtic play to the level that we know that they can play at that they've shown more often than not this time this, this season then I think they should be fine in this game they've got players that are eager to make an impact you talk about those players that were inexperienced last season at Feyenoord and Lager Bielka and Odin Tiago home both of them won't be playing tonight that's that, so that just shows you the evolution of yeah. the squad Lager Bielka is away and Odin Tiago home isn't in the isn't in the, the Champions League squad whatsoever. So, you know, those players won't be available, even though they've got that experience of playing in the in, in the big leagues. But it's an opportunity for guys like Liam Scales, who's already had that season of experience. Um, Arna Engels, who's £11 million, but hasn't had the exposure to the Champions League. I just feel that tonight could be the game that Engels really comes alive and really shows everybody why Celtic have paid £11 million for him. This is the sort of showcase game that I think he's been waiting for. He's had his appearance against Rangers, which he looked solid. He had his man-of-the-match performance against Hearts. Now it's all about him getting to grips with a game and controlling it for the 90 minutes or for however long he's on the pitch. Celtic have had a massive, have spent a massive outlay on this player, their, their, their record. It's all about him now going and showing it and showing why he is a Champions League level player. And I wouldn't bet against him tonight. I think it's I think it's his sort of game tonight to get on the score sheet or, or really dominate proceedings. Mm. It's going to be interesting to see the team. We've, we've done the midfield chat, guys, I think the last two, so I don't want to go back into that. But other than that, does the, does the rest of the team pick itself? Tony, if you take the three midfield, well, you can, take the, you can put Callum McGregor in. Do the other eight players... Uh, pick themselves. Yeah. I think they do, don't they? You the only one you would maybe have any concerns over is Alistair Johnson and the hamstring. But was uh, there an update on that yesterday? I, I think he said the squad was fit and healthy. Right. He said that I think he was asked at the end and it was just a kind of throwaway line. So I don't uh, I don't see him I don't see Ralston coming in then if that's his thoughts uh, I think he'll He'll stick with Johnston and, as you say, the rest as is, isn't it? Scales has been uh, playing out his skin and domestically, so Aaron Trusty's going to have to wait, isn't he? Yeah. Amanda for... was just asking about that, Tony. She was saying, why do we bring in Trusty and Vai if they're not going to be starting? But they, they, they probably will at some stage, but now's not the time to change. Sunday might be their, might see their uh, you know, first starts. I think it's a, a great opportunity to rotate the squad that way and see what they've got. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, and the three up front, it's got to be Maida on the left, Kuhn on the right, and Kyogo through the middle, isn't it? With, as you say, the knowledge that you can bring on Adam Ida as well and give him some v- vital and valuable Champions League minutes. And I wouldn't put it past him coming on and breaking his duck in this kind of game. Uh, and, you know, Ryan's touched upon... Because we know, we know your midfield. We know myself and Ryan's midfield. We put it out on our uh, predicted elevens. If you want to have a read at that, it's on, it's on the website. But also, guys like Johnston and Taylor have got a vital role too. You know, going forward, and uh, Taylor just nights like tonight are, excuse the pun. They're Taylor made for Taylor, aren't they? To play those and to play inverted and to play those passes and to play the guys in. You know, you just you just need everybody, as I said, to be fully concentrated, to be on it. Whatever team is chosen, they've got to be bang at it from the start. Just really get the crowd behind them and give them something to sing about. I mean, the crowd will be there anyway. They'll, they'll do their part. Yeah. But the players just really need to grasp the enormity of the occasion because it is huge. And as Ryan said there, and I said, this is a must win. The Celtic have to get their campaign off to the best possible start. And I think the manager feels confident in the players being able to do that. He said it that it all started in pre season in America and it's been building to this crescendo tonight. And I think, uh, yeah, and I think that's why we feel good about the team, feel good about the manager. And all we need is a result tonight to feel even better about ourselves. You know, I've said it before, 
if we yeah. win today, the, the excitement yeah. and expectation is going to go into hyperdrive. Exactly. And as somebody said, you know, Celtic win tonight, they'll, they'll be winning the Champions League, or if they don't, they'll be like, <laughs> you know, they dross. You know. But this is a, a game for calm heads, cool heads, and for players to step up to the plate. doesn't matter who steps up to the plate as long as they produce a, a winning performance. But you do feel that Celtic have a bunch of match winners in that team, don't you? I think the support have got a, an important role tonight, Ryan. You're, you're going to be there. So I guess I'm, I'm speaking to you here. Um, that, you know, we're, we're going to have the atmosphere. The atmosphere is going to be rocking beforehand even though we're not even though we're not playing Real Madrid or Barcelona it's going to be as loud as that I think because we're all so excited and we all crave the Champions League I just wonder if um, you know it is a tough start to the game and maybe we don't get that early goal because listen we're, we're facing the champions of Slovakia uh, we're, they're going to be stronger I think than anyone we've faced domestically so far uh, and my one fear about tonight would be like if we don't get that early goal and maybe we're not playing, the team are just a little bit nervous, which would be understandable. Do the support get nervous as well? Do we maybe get on the team's back a little bit? Because I think that only helps our opponents. So I think that's a big part of tonight as well, the, the support, you know, sticking with the team, even if we, we face some adversity. Yeah, as much as I talk about the, the great atmosphere at Celtic Park, it's great at the start, but if they don't get an early goal or if they go behind or if things happen in the game that are adverse to Celtic, it does have a bit of a habit of becoming a bit of a nervy place. Um, maybe the singing stops and everybody gets a bit tetchy and there'll be there'll be a level of expectancy tonight that Celtic will go out and do the business against oh, yeah. Bratislava. Oh, no, no disrespect to the Slovakian champions, but you know... Everyone's going along support. tonight expecting us to win. Yeah, the, absolutely. No, a Celtic um, fan going along thinking anything other than you know we should win this. Yeah, but I, I, at the same time, I wouldn't want the, the Celtic players. I don't think they will be thinking like that whatsoever. But they need to just keep their their, their game heads on and um, and really and really get ready for this game and just treat it like any other. You know, treat it like Hearts, yeah. treat it like Rangers, etc. Go out, go out and play your own game, and and the rest should follow. They've got enough quality in that team, enough European quality too. They've had the experience. Even guys coming off the bench like James Forrest, he's got experience of scoring in Europe, big goals. Um, you know, t- ten or so years ago, and and uh, and, and later. But I, I just, I just feel that Celtic are in such a good place at the moment. Yes, they weren't great at the weekend against Hearts, but they got the job done. But I think a lot of eyes were already. On this game, the opening game in the Champions League, a lot of eyes will be on Celtic Park tonight. I just hope that they they do themselves justice and get the three points that's required. They've got the players on the park, they've got the players on the bench that can come off, come on and make a difference in the second half, regardless of who that is in the midfield, especially. Um, I'm I'm just really excited to see how this team fares on the biggest stage. It, it doesn't matter about the opposition. You'll still have the Champions League anthem before the game. You'll still have the crowd going crazy with "You'll Never Walk Alone." But it's just a different atmosphere because of the fact that this is a game that a lot of people expect Celtic to get something from, get the three points from, and I hope they live up to those expectations. Yeah, 100%. Right, uh, referee, I've not actually heard anyone talking about this yet. The referee is uh, Danny McKelly from the Netherlands. That's where the, the team are from. Uh, I don't need to really read you out the rest of the... Uh, on-field officials, because you're not going to really know them. Uh, the VAR is from Netherlands as well, assistant VAR Spanish. Uh, Danny McKelly is, uh, I think, pretty well known. You probably know his face. Um, I've just had a look. Yeah, you definitely know his face if you've watched yeah. European football. He's one of those referees that we've seen before over the years. Did a couple of games at the Euros, did Croatia, Italy. One, I think, Italy scored last minute, didn't they? And he did Germany's win over Hungary. Uh, he did Leverkusen Roma last year. He did Bayern Arsenal and Barca Napoli last year. So it's a, a pretty, you know, big name referee tonight, Tony. I was hoping for Pier Luigi Colina, but uh, there you go, <laughs> or Pier Luigi Robotham, as he was known in uh, Scotland. As he, him and Jonathan Robotham, you couldn't tell them apart. Yeah, because of the <laughs> bald peaks. Yeah, but there you go. But yeah, I think Colina did Celtic once, didn't he? And I think. Luka. Stuttgart, I think. 3-1. Sent a Stuttgart player off, didn't they, for a... For a Kevin Kirani. An aisle of a goal-scoring opportunity, I believe. Uh, yeah, he was very, very good. Let's put it that way. Uh, 
there was few referees like Kalina to be fair. You know what I mean? But uh, there you go. But yeah, I, I, again, it's like everything else. I think discipline is going to be important, and I think the manager touched upon that because he was asked that yesterday. Uh, you know, Celtic never gave themselves a chance in the opening game of the Champions League last season. And Brendan Rodgers said he still thought that the Dyson Raider sending off was harsh. You get all that, but discipline is important with these things because you you really do need to you're refereed to a, a different standard in in European football. And you know, so that's another thing that Celtic must uh, when I'm talking about be calm and cool heads, can't go diving into challenges under the you know, under the guise of getting stuck in and being wholehearted and totally committed, you be sensible about these things. And I think the, the manager will certainly drill that into them, won't he? But Celtic did a few sending off in the Champions League campaign last season yeah. and don't want to see a repeat of that. But again, that comes down to like the experience. Like, Have, have you learned your, your lessons from yeah. last season? And Rod just talked about the fact that the referees are different in Europe yesterday yeah. than, than what they are domestically and that the players need to be ready for that, that you will be officiated differently. Just just touching on that, Danny McKelly, he was the, the referee that officiated and Kasper Schmeichel will know all about him. He'll probably have a bone to pick with him as well because he's the one that gave the penalty uh, for Raheem Sterling against when it was Denmark versus England that got them to the Euros final back in 2021. So Kasper Schmeichel knows all about this referee. Um, anyone that remembers that decision knows how incredibly soft that penalty was at the time, late on, when it was Denmark v England. So Schmeichel knows all about that. But he's had he's probably had more good games than bad, and, and that's the reason why he's still officiating at the top level. But he's got a recognisable face. But you just go into these games expecting... Um, you know, different refereeing. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But you're just hoping that the right decision is found at the end of the day, regardless of what the, the regardless of what the incident is. Yeah, you just hope not to be talking about referees. You hope your quality shines through on the night, and you're talking about a terrific Celtic performance and a, a cracking win. We don't want to be talking about a decision that's gone against you. You know, so that's something that it's set up. I, I, I think, I think Celtic there's a level and a really high level of expectation, and Celtic now have to cope with that pressure. This team has to cope with that pressure of being probably overwhelming Bookie's favourites to win this match, and the Bookies rarely get it wrong. You have to go and justify that that favouritism now by going out and just, as I say, and, and winning, and, and nothing to suggest that you're not confident, but you've always got to respect your opposition and, and you know... Slovak, they're the Slovakian champions or the Slovak champions. So, you know, it doesn't matter what level of football you play at. If you are the champions of your country, you've got a decent pedigree and you're coming. Ryan said the manager said he's coming for a draw. I, I never believe all that. I always think that's kidology, you know, just to mm. lull you into that. You know, we will see what Slovan Bratislava are made of when the ball rolls for real. You can talk the talk and say what they like. I love. A lot of it has no bearing. A bit like this, it might not have any bearing on what actually happened. Mm. As speculation at this moment in time, what we think will happen, but we're basing it on the fact that we've watched Celtic and we know what they can produce. So that's fair enough. It's just, it's just time to produce it, isn't it, at the highest level of club I think um, I think they'll they'll be quick in the counter attack. I think that's something we're going to have to to watch out for. I think they'll be much better at that than, than any team we face in, in Scotland. And I feel like that's always the worry for me personally for Celtic in, in Europe. Do we get a little bit excited? Do we leave gaps at the back? I can think of so many of the goals we've conceded in the past couple of seasons and probably the majority of the majority of them have been counter attacking goals. So that's something I'm intrigued to to see tonight. Um and yeah I think it's going to be a tough challenge. I, I was I was kind of surprised. I don't know if you guys saw the the Opta stuff yesterday, but they've got they've got us down as uh, with, with a sixty eight percent chance of winning the match. So basically, if you if you play the match a hundred times, they reckon we'll win it sixty eight out of a hundred. That's higher than any team playing tonight in the Champions League. It's higher than any team playing tomorrow night in the Champions League, which for me is way off. 
because uh, it doesn't feel like that given our recent record. It feels to me like we're favourites, but probably like a a kind of um, 60-40 type thing. Obviously, the draw is an option as well. Um, the other thing I'll opt to put out yesterday, uh, and because we got a comment the other day, didn't we, asking how many points are you going to need to to uh, to qualify for the uh, the top 24? And, and basically, they put out a thing, and I've got it here. If you get 10 points, they, they did 50,000 simulations opt to, so slightly more than, than I did. Um they, they give it, if you get 10 points, a 99% chance of making the top 24. So 10 points will will we'll do it. We've got a chance to get three of them tonight. And seven from our last seven games, if we win tonight, seems a lot less of a task than 10 does right now. So that's what, for me, is at stake tonight. It's a huge opportunity for the team. Are you looking forward to it, Ryan? Very much so, yeah. Champions League nights always take care of themselves at Celtic Park, always excited. I love night games in general, regardless if it's domestic yeah. games or Champions League. There's just something there's just something brilliant about the floodlights coming on um, and, and just just the whole vibe of the stadium at night. I love it during the day, don't get me wrong, like those 12 o'clock games against Rangers are brilliant. But I don't think anything beats an 8 o'clock kickoff in the Champions League. You've got the stars coming to Celtic Park. I know that won't be necessarily the case tonight, but in, in years gone by, having the stars having the stars while the stars are out as well it's just it, it just it, it, it works it's it's a perfect stadium for champions league football it's a magical place especially before the match you'll never walk alone there's nothing else like it i know liverpool do it it's celtic, they don't hold a candle to celtic's rendition rendition of it it's just it's just different level um and then that champions league i don't I, I believe that they're one of the only teams that actually gets louder when the champions league anthem comes on because you watch loads of teams just and you can hear the anthem, but you can't really hear it when Celtic start playing it. Celtic fans don't take it for granted. They will make all the noise in the world when that anthem comes on. Um, and, and that's one of the exciting moments. Hopefully I can capture that in video and put it on the, the socials this evening. I'm sure that'll be that'll be a popular video when it goes out. But yeah, I, I'm just looking forward to it all. Very different going into it, knowing that Celtic are the slight favourites going into it. But at the same time, it's exciting. It's the first game. You talk about 10 points, giving you a 99% chance. Get those three points on the board. Um, and it really sets you up for the rest of the, the league phase. I know they've got two difficult games coming up against Dortmund and Atalanta, which probably makes it even more of a must win to really yeah. get off get off the get off the zero points and, and, and get some on the board. Three points would be absolutely ideal come the end of the night. I just hope there's a good performance, and if there's a good performance, then you hope there's a few goals and a win to go along with that. But yeah, uh, long story short, I'm extremely excited about getting to Celtic Park tonight, and hopefully Celtic can live up to what is going to be an incredible atmosphere on the park. Can't wait for it. Uh, Jay Keen, I want to see us playing the kind of football we played pre-season, playing through teams and countering quickly, which has been yep. difficult against Scottish teams who will always have 11 men behind the ball. Des is not as nervous as he's been in the past. Uh, we have a strong squad to get the result. Concel, positive thinking, boys. We're going to win and it's going to be comfortable, uh, I hope. Uh, Alex, absolutely ecstatic for tonight. Nerves, excitement and a lot. If the players keep their heads and play to their standards, then we will get the job done. And Henry McClarsen, Brendan will have them prepared. Cal Mack will be a common presence in the park. Tony? Yeah, I think that's what the manager was talking about yesterday, wasn't it? It's the, I think he feels it's the most prepared he's ever been with a Celtic team going into yeah. the Champions League, right? And preparation is key. It's how he works. And I think there's that kind of calmness about the Celtic supporters. The, the, there's excitement, basically, now. I, and I think that's you normally are nervous going into this. I don't think there's nervousness about tonight. I think there's just real anticipation and excitement and an expectation. Celtic have to live up to that billing. The manager believes that they can. He's got a squad of players there that that can uh, live up to that billing and produce the kind of performance we've been seeing since pre-season. So let's do it. You just have to go and do it now. It's you no know, the it's came the moment the days arrived. You know, it's gonna be brilliant. And as Ryan says, I I wrote a thing, one of the first things I ever uh, put on this website was about the highly charged atmospheres at Celtic Park on these kind of nights. And during that Champions League theme tune, 
I likened it to like it's a primal scream. The Celtic fans just absolutely lose it. They, they, they lose it and you know they go absolutely tonto during that and it's brilliant. And there is very few places where fans do the same when they hear that music, but the Celtic fans just go off their head and it's just like two minutes of utter bedlam and noise and it's uh, it's wonderful to watch, it's wonderful to see in operation and it just it's what makes these kind of nights particularly special because uh, Celtic never take it for granted playing at this elite club level, they never will and it's just, it's a, it's a wonder and a joy to see your team competing at this level but now we want to compete and claim scalps and get results it's it's what we desperately crave as I said at the top of the programme, we, we want this so much and I think uh, I think we'll get what we want tonight Let's hope so. Uh, that's the final thing I, I, I would say for today. I just think that the team have been building towards this moment, um, and I just think they're, I think they're ready to go and grasp this opportunity. And it's a big opportunity tonight. It's going to be a, a tough game, but I think the team are, are going to be right at it. And I think if we're right at it, we'll win the game. Have you guys got any more videos planned today? What's the story? Yeah, we'll be on pre and post match, won't we, Ryan? Absolutely, wouldn't miss it for the world. You've got to, the, the, regardless of how late the post match is going to be, we will be on it, win, lose, or draw. We have to be. Uh, it's a Champions League night, after all. I, I doubt people will be sleeping, especially, or even if Celtic get a massive, a, a massive win. I don't think people will be. I don't think people will be sleeping. They'll be wanting to hear what we have to say after the game. Fingers crossed, they want to hear what we say after the game. But we'll be there pre-match. We'll be there post-match. I just think there's so much opportunity for Celtic tonight. We got a we got a little bit of a taster at the end. I know it was dead rubber, not dead rubber, whatever you want to call it, against Feyenoord last season. That was a taster of what we want in the Champions League for Celtic. You know that last minute. Maybe not leave it to the last minute this time around. Um, let's get the game sorted before. <laughs> anyone, anyone will do. Yes, I totally get that. But preferably they they win the game comfortably. Um, but you know what it's like at Celtic Park. You know. Strange things happen when you were telling me about those statistics. You know the sixty, what was it, sixty eight percent chance or something like that. Yeah, it's <laughs> that doesn't that, that doesn't take into account the strange things that happen on at Celtic Park on a Champions League match day. You can't even talk about them in a statistical outlook at all because there's crazy I'm things. Really that can happen. That out. It's only one statistic um, that matters, guys. One more goal than Bratis Lillard tonight. That's the bottom line. Yeah. That's all, and and yeah. three points at the end of, of the evening. And you're talking about coming back on. The public gets what the public wants, Hamish, or, or maybe not. In this case, it's, it's, it's me and Ryan coming back on. But a famous man once said that. More famous man than me. Uh, very good sign. You know, I'm just, as I said, I've said that about three or four times, Celtic Park and a Champions League night takes care of itself. Cannot wait. I, I, I get excited for everything. I get excited for the walk to the, the stadium, walking up the walking up the stairs to the to my seat. Um the Champions League and from the you'll never walk alone. These are the things that it's the work throughout the season that brings you to this point, winning the league and getting that automatic entry into the Champions League. It's a reward, but I don't want them to see it as a reward. I want to see them as that next step that they need to get to. They need to to show themselves against Europe's greatest teams and you know it's a real a real opportunity tonight for Celtic to lay down a marker for the rest of the competition I think there was a couple of markers laid down last night in particular Aston Villa and Bayern Munich I'd like Celtic to put their own one down tonight and say that we're not there to make up the numbers we're here to actually compete and get and get through nothing less than a 9-2 victory will will do tonight <laughs> Uh, Brendan, if you're watching. Right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, yeah, the, the buzz is going to be real for tonight. It's a big one. Uh, same goes for all of you watching. If you're going to the game, enjoy yourself. Make as much noise as possible. Get right behind the team. Uh, if you're not going like me, whatever you're watching in the world, uh, I'm sure you'll you'll enjoy it anyway. So, yeah, the guys will be with you before the game as well to kill a bit more time uh, and afterwards as well. Thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll uh, we'll catch you soon.